master communication skills, learn to transform your social life. Written by Justice O. Malcolm. Published by Audiobooks Office. Introduction. The way you communicate shapes your world. Every interaction you have, every relationship you build, and every opportunity you seize is influenced by how well you can express yourself and connect with others. Yet many people feel misunderstood, unheard, or disconnected because they've never been taught the art of communication. The truth is, communication is not just about talking, it's about understanding, listening, and creating genuine connections. Mastering communication skills can transform your social life, elevate your relationships, and open doors to opportunities you never thought possible. Effective communication isn't just about saying the right words, it's about how you say them. It's about the energy you bring into a conversation, the way you listen with intention, and the empathy you show toward others. When you learn to communicate with clarity and confidence, people are naturally drawn to you. They feel heard, respected, and valued in your presence. This is how you begin to cultivate relationships that are not only meaningful but also mutually beneficial. Think about the last time you had a conversation that left you feeling misunderstood. Perhaps you were trying to convey something important, but the other person just didn't get it. This is the result of communication breakdowns, and they happen more often than we realize. But the good news is, these skills can be learned. You can train yourself to be a better speaker, a more active listener, and someone who can navigate even the most challenging social situations with ease. It's not about being perfect, it's about being authentic and intentional in the way you communicate. To transform your social life, you must first understand the key principles of communication. It starts with self-awareness, knowing your own communication style, your strengths, and the areas where you can improve. Then comes the art of listening, truly listening, not just to respond, but to understand. People can sense when you are fully present, and that alone can change the dynamics of any conversation. This book will guide you through the process of mastering these essential skills. From learning how to express your thoughts clearly and assertively to navigating difficult conversations with grace, you will gain the tools needed to elevate your communication and, in turn, transform your social life. Whether in personal relationships, professional settings, or everyday interactions, Effective communication is your key to deeper connections, greater influence, and lasting success. It all begins with how you communicate. Are you ready to master the art? Imagine being able to navigate any social situation as smoothly as a seasoned diplomat, transforming your social life into a veritable masterpiece of eloquence and charisma. The secret lies in mastering your communication skills. By understanding your listener, crafting compelling messages, and building trust with your listeners, you can command attention and foster meaningful connections. Yet, this is just scratching the surface. Want to discover more about honing these skills and how they can revolutionize your interactions? Let's continue this conversation. For more information about the ebook version of this audio, check the video description or visit audiobooksoffice.com. We notice that 69% of you who listen to our video are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Chapter 1. Identifying Communication Goals Before you can master communication, it's essential to identify your communication goals. You're not just chatting aimlessly, right? There's a purpose, an end game, an objective you're pursuing. So let's pinpoint what that is. Are you trying to inform, persuade, or just entertain? Are you hoping to deepen a relationship, make a sale, or simply share a story? Each of these goals requires a different approach, a different set of skills, and a different strategy. Understanding your goal, in the beginning, will set the course for your entire conversation. Write your communication goal down. Make it clear, specific, realistic, and time-bound. 
This isn't just some airy-fairy exercise. It's a goal-setting practice that's been proven to work in countless studies. By writing it down, you're making it real, tangible, and most importantly, attainable. Another nugget of wisdom, identify your secondary goals. Yes, you've got a primary goal, but what else do you want to achieve? Maybe you want to come across as friendly, knowledgeable, or trustworthy. These secondary goals support your primary goal and shape the way you communicate. Lastly, remember that your communication goals may change over time. That's perfectly okay. What matters is that you're clear on what they're at any given moment. This clarity will guide your words, your tone, your body language, and ultimately your success in communication. Chapter 2. Understanding Your Audience Often, the key to effective communication lies in your understanding of your audience. It's like the groundwork that sets the stage for all your interactions. You wouldn't talk to your boss the same way you'd chat with your best friend, right? That's because you understand their different expectations, preferences, and contexts. Knowing your audience helps you tailor your message in a way they can easily grasp and appreciate. You'll know what tone to use, which examples to give, and even what jokes to crack. It's about making them comfortable and maintaining their interest. But how do you really understand your audience? It's not as intimidating as you might think. Start by observing. Look at their body language, listen to their choice of words, notice their reactions. Are they bored, confused, intrigued? Use this feedback to adjust your approach. Research also plays a big role. If you're giving a presentation, for instance, find out who'll be in the room. What's their background? What issues matter to them? The more you know about them, the more you can connect. Remember, understanding your audience isn't about manipulating them. It's about respecting their individuality and building a genuine connection. And once you get that, you're halfway to mastering your communication skills. Chapter 3. Crafting Compelling Messages Once you've got a solid understanding of your audience, it's time to roll up your sleeves and start crafting compelling messages. This step's all about resonating with your listeners, drawing them into your world, and making your points unforgettably clear. First off, know your purpose. What's the one thing you want your audience to take away from your message? Your purpose serves as your North Star, guiding every word, every phrase you craft. Next, you've got to hook him. People's attention spans are notoriously short these days, so your opening needs to grab them. An intriguing question, a surprising fact, or a relatable story can do the trick. Thirdly, keep it simple. You want to communicate, not confuse. So, ditch the jargon and go for clarity and precision. Your audience will appreciate it, and they'll be more likely to remember your message, too. Finally, wrap it up with a strong conclusion. Restate your key point, and leave your audience with a clear call to action. What do you want them to do or think after hearing your message? While crafting compelling messages is important, building a solid rapport with your audience is equally critical for effective communication. You need to foster trust with your listeners. This isn't just about ticking boxes on a checklist, it's about cultivating a relationship. When your audience trusts you, they're more likely to listen, engage, and respond positively to your messages. To establish trust, you've got to be authentic. Don't just put on a show, be genuine. People can sense when you're not being true to yourself and that can damage their trust in you. Be open about your strengths and weaknesses. Show vulnerability. It may feel risky, but it's a powerful way to connect with others. Consistency is another key to building trust. If you're inconsistent in your actions, your audience will start to doubt you. So verify your words match your actions. Don't promise something you can't deliver. When you follow through on your commitments, you demonstrate reliability, bolstering the trust your listeners have in you. Lastly, communicate with respect. Treat your audience as equals, not as subordinates. Listen to their opinions, even if you don't agree. Show empathy and understanding. When people feel heard and respected, 
they're more likely to trust you. Chapter 4 Effective Body Language Mastering the art of body language can substantially enhance your communication skills. It's not just the words you say, it's how you say them and body language is a gigantic part of that how. The way you carry yourself, your gestures, and your facial expressions all send loud and clear messages, often more potent than words. Imagine a scenario where you're talking to someone and they're constantly looking at their watch. Even if they're nodding and agreeing with you, the message their body sends is, I'm not interested. I've got somewhere else to be. You'd feel dismissed, wouldn't you? That's the power of body language. So how do you use body language effectively? First off, maintain eye contact. It shows you're focused and interested, but don't stare, that's creepy. Find a balance. Next, keep an open posture. Crossed arms can send a signal that you're closed off or defensive. Stand or sit up straight. It's not only good for your back, it shows confidence. Your facial expressions, too, should match your words. Smiling when you're happy, frowning when you're concerned, these are universal signs that help convey your feelings accurately. And finally, be aware of your personal space and others. Invading someone's personal space can make them uncomfortable. Chapter 5. Developing Active Listening A staggering 80% of our communication is listening. Yet how often do we truly engage in active listening? Active listening isn't just about hearing words. It's about understanding, grasping, and engaging. It's about making the speaker feel heard and valued. It's a skill that can transform your personal and professional relationships, and it's something you can master. So, how do you become an active listener? First, give your full attention. That's right. Put down the phone, mute the TV, and focus on the person talking. Show them that they're important and what they're saying matters. Next, verify your understanding correctly. Don't assume instead. Practice the technique of paraphrasing. That's where you repeat back what you've heard, but in your own words. This shows that you're not just hearing, you're processing and understanding. And don't forget the power of nonverbal cues, nodding, maintaining eye contact, and leaning in shows the speaker that you're interested and engaged. Finally, hold back your judgment. It's easy to jump to conclusions or start formulating a response before the speaker has finished. But remember, active listening is about understanding, not responding. Developing active listening skills isn't just about becoming a better communicator. It's about enhancing your relationships, improving your empathy, and increasing your understanding of the world around you. Put in the effort, and you'll see the rewards. In the next chapter, we'll explore the art of asking open-ended questions, another key aspect of masterful communication. But for now, practice active listening. It's a game changer. Chapter 6 Asking Open-Ended Questions You've started honing your active listening skills. Fantastic. Now, let's take your communication skills to the next level by learning how to ask open-ended questions. This technique is your secret weapon to keep conversations flowing smoothly and make your interactions more engaging. Open-ended questions are those that can't be answered with a simple yes or no. They invite people to share their thoughts, feelings, and experiences in more detail. For example, instead of asking, did you like the movie, try what did you think of the movie. The latter encourages a more in-depth response, allowing for a richer conversation. Using open-ended questions doesn't just guarantee a lively conversation. It shows your genuine interest in the other person. It's not about prying, but about understanding their perspective and creating a connection. And most importantly, it gives the other person the chance to express themselves. Remember, the art of asking open-ended questions lies in your curiosity. Be genuinely interested in the other person's story. Avoid leading questions that may seem like you're pushing your own agenda. Instead, focus on asking questions that encourage them to explore further into their thoughts and feelings. Chapter 7. Clarifying Misunderstandings 
In the domain of successful communication, clarifying misunderstandings is a crucial skill to develop. You've likely found yourself in a situation where you've misunderstood someone or been misunderstood yourself. It happens to all of us. But don't worry, with practice, you can become a pro at clearing up confusion. Misunderstandings can create unnecessary tension and disrupt harmony. They can derail a conversation and cause it to veer off track. Say you're in a team meeting and a colleague misinterprets your suggestion. Instead of letting the misunderstanding fester, address it head on. It's imperative not to leave it unresolved. Use phrases like, I think we may not be on the same page here, or I believe there's been a misunderstanding. However, be careful not to sound confrontational. Be respectful, patient, and tactful. You want to rectify the situation, not escalate it. Remember, the goal is to facilitate understanding, not win an argument. Also, don't forget the significance of nonverbal cues. They can help you gauge whether there's confusion or misunderstanding. If you notice puzzled looks or crossed arms, take the initiative to clarify. Finally, when you're on the receiving end of a misunderstanding, don't hesitate to ask for clarification. There's no shame in not getting something the first time around. It's better to ask than to make assumptions that can lead to further misunderstandings. Chapter 8 Adapting to Different Styles Traversing the world of communication, being flexible, is essential to adapt to various communication styles. You see, not everyone expresses their thoughts or feelings the same way. Some people are clear and direct, while others prefer subtlety and nuance. It's like a dance, and you've got to match your partner's rhythm to avoid stepping on their toes. So how do you adapt to varying communication styles? First, observe. Pay attention to cues that signal someone's preferred style. Are they blunt or do they beat around the bush? Do they prefer written communication or do they thrive in face-to-face -face conversations? Once you've got a handle on their style, mirror it. This doesn't mean you should lose your authenticity, but show them you understand and respect their way of communicating. Second. Practice empathy. Understand that people communicate in ways that make sense to them. If someone prefers a different style than yours, it's not a personal affront. It's just their way of making sense of the world. Chapter 9. Managing Conflict Resolution. The art of managing conflict resolution is a critical skill in mastering communication. It's not just about winning or losing, it's about finding a solution that's acceptable to all parties involved. You're not always going to agree with everyone, and that's okay. The key is knowing how to handle those disagreements effectively. When conflict arises, it's crucial to keep your emotions in check. Responding with anger or frustration won't help the situation. Instead, try to remain calm and composed. It's easier said than done but with practice, you'll find it becomes second nature. Listen actively to what the other person is saying. Make sure you understand their point of view before responding. It's vital to find common ground. Ask clarifying questions if you need to, and don't interrupt. Show them that you value their opinion, even if you don't agree with it. Practicing effective communication during conflict is about being assertive, not aggressive. Clearly express your thoughts and feelings without attacking the other person. Use I statements to express your feelings, such as I feel upset when you do this rather than you make me feel this. Chapter 10. Practicing Empathy and Compassion Just as managing conflict resolution requires a level-headed approach, practicing empathy and compassion also calls for a thoughtful mindset. It's not just about understanding others' feelings, it's about sharing those feelings, experiencing them as if they were your own. This ability to walk in someone else's shoes is a critical component of effective communication. Empathy places you in the heart of others' experiences, allowing you to grasp their perspectives, their fears, their joy. It's about feeling with people rather than feeling for them. And when you're able to truly empathize, your communication becomes more authentic, more sincere. 
Compassion, on the other hand, goes a step further. It's not just understanding and sharing others' emotions, it's about acting upon that understanding to alleviate their suffering. You're not just a passive observer, you're an active participant in their emotional journey. But how do you cultivate these twin pillars of effective communication? Start by listening, truly listening to the people around you. Don't just hear their words, understand their stories. Recognize their emotions, validate them. Be non-judgmental, be patient, and then act. If they're suffering, find ways to alleviate that suffering. Small acts of kindness can go a long way. Chapter 11. Using Positive Language Mastering the art of positive language can notably enhance your communication skills. It's not just about sprinkling your conversations with happy words. It's a profound shift in your approach to communication, focusing on constructive and affirmative expressions. In positive language, you'll find, doesn't minimize or ignore problems. Instead, it reframes them in a way that focuses on solutions and optimism. You're not sidestepping the issue but you're tackling it with a can-do attitude. For instance, instead of saying, I can't meet you today, you could say, how about we catch up tomorrow? This approach has a transformative impact on your social life. People naturally gravitate towards positivity. When you communicate with a positive outlook, you're more likely to inspire and motivate those around you. You'll foster stronger relationships built on mutual respect and understanding. It's important to note, however, that positive language isn't about sugarcoating the truth or avoiding difficult conversations. It's about framing your thoughts and ideas in a way that encourages dialogue and cooperation rather than confrontation and negativity. Don't underestimate the power of positive language. It's a potent tool that can remarkably improve your communication skills and ultimately transform your social interactions. So make the shift today and watch your relationships flourish. You'll be surprised at the impact such a small change can make. Chapter 12. Avoiding Communication Barriers. Let's break down the walls that often hinder effective communication. First, you've got to recognize these barriers. They could be anything from a lack of clarity in your messages, cultural differences, or even your own emotions. When you're not clear in what you're trying to express, confusion ensues. That's why being precise, simple, and concise in your messages is vital. Don't beat around the bush. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Next, cultural differences can create misunderstandings. Remember, not everyone shares your perspectives or experiences. As a result, respecting and understanding different cultural contexts is imperative. Listen more than you speak, ask questions to gain clarity, and empathize with different viewpoints. Lastly, emotions can cloud your judgment and distort your messages. If you're angry, anxious, or even overly excited, it can affect how you communicate. So managing your emotions effectively is necessary. In all, avoiding communication barriers isn't just about improving your speaking skills. It's about enhancing your listening skills and emotional intelligence, too. It's about understanding and respecting diverse cultures. It's about clear, concise, and precise messaging. Chapter 13. Mastering Nonverbal Cues Imagine a conversation without words, where your body does the talking. Your gestures, facial expressions, and posture might be saying more than you realize. Mastering nonverbal cues is a key aspect of transforming your social life and achieving effective communication. You see, nonverbal cues often speak louder than words. They convey emotions, intentions, and responses. They can affirm or contradict what you're saying verbally. That's why it's essential to guarantee your body language aligns with your words. Maintain eye contact when you're speaking or listening. It shows you're engaged and respectful. But don't turn it into a staring contest, or you'll make people uncomfortable. Use it in moderation for a balanced conversation. Your posture also tells a story. Slouching may imply disinterest or lack of confidence, while an upright stance expresses openness and attentiveness. 
Hand gestures can emphasize your points and express enthusiasm. But be careful, as excessive hand movements might distract your listener. Remember, it's all about balance. Facial expressions, too, play a pivotal role. A warm smile can make your communication more friendly, while a frown can indicate displeasure or disagreement. Touch, if appropriate, can also help build a connection. A firm handshake, a pat on the back, or a light touch on the arm can express support and friendship. Chapter 14. Creating a safe environment. While mastering nonverbal cues substantially boosts your communication skills, it's equally important to ponder the environment in which these interactions occur. Remember, the right surroundings can profoundly amplify your message, fostering understanding and empathy. So how can you create a safe environment that bolsters your communication? Firstly, consider your physical environment. It's vital to guarantee the space is comfortable and inviting. This doesn't mean you need a plush, fancy setup. Even simple changes, like arranging chairs to face each other or removing physical barriers, can make a notable difference. The goal is to create a space that encourages open and honest communication. But a safe environment extends beyond the physical. It's about establishing psychological safety too. You need to foster a culture of respect and trust. Make it clear that everyone's opinion matters and that it's okay to disagree. Encourage people to express their thoughts and feelings without fear of criticism or ridicule. Finally, remember that creating a safe environment is a continuous process. It requires active participation and constant attention. You've got to be sensitive to the needs and feelings of others. Adjusting the environment is necessary. Remember, a safe environment is a nurturing ground for effective communication, and it's your responsibility to cultivate it. So, take the time to create a space that encourages meaningful dialogue. You'll be amazed at how it can transform your social life. Dealing with difficult people. Chapter 15. Dealing with difficult people. Even when you've created a perfect environment for communication, you may still encounter difficult people. It's a given, and it's part of the journey to mastering communication skills. You can't control others, but you can certainly control how you respond to them. Firstly, don't let difficult people push your buttons. Maintain your cool and don't let them disrupt your emotional balance. They're likely testing your patience, but that's when you need to hold on to your patience the tightest. Secondly, Establish boundaries. You've the right to be treated with respect. If someone continually disrespects you, make it clear that their behavior isn't acceptable. You're not being rude, you're simply respecting yourself. Next, try to understand their perspective. Often, difficult people are dealing with their own issues, and their behavior is a reflection of those troubles. If you can empathize with their situation, you'll likely diffuse the tension and pave the way for more effective communication. Finally, don't take things personally. It's not about you, it's about them. Their rudeness, anger, or impatience is a manifestation of their own internal struggles. Remember, everyone has the right to their feelings and opinions. Instead of trying to change difficult people, focus on managing your reactions to them. With patience, empathy, and a thick skin, you'll be able to maintain a healthy communication environment, regardless of others' behavior. In concluding, dealing with difficult people requires tact, understanding, and a lot of patience. But once you master it, you'll notice a transformation in your social life. It's all part of the journey to becoming a master communicator. Chapter 16. Building Rapport with Strangers. Mastering the art of dealing with difficult people is an important step on your journey to becoming a communication expert. But to truly excel, you need to build rapport with strangers. It's not just about being friendly, it's about establishing trust, understanding, and mutual respect. Firstly, be approachable. Smile genuinely and maintain eye contact. People are drawn to positivity and warmth, so let your amiable demeanor be your calling card. Then, be a good listener. 
show genuine interest in their stories and opinions. It's not merely about waiting for your turn to speak, but truly hearing them out. This is a powerful strategy to make people feel valued and understood. Next, find common ground. Discover shared interests or experiences that can serve as your conversation's foundation. It's an excellent way to foster a sense of camaraderie and connection. It's okay if you don't share the same hobbies or backgrounds. Sometimes, the most profound connections come from the most unexpected commonalities. Lastly, respect boundaries. While it's important to be open and engaging, it's equally critical to respect personal space and privacy. Don't push too hard or too fast. Let the relationship develop naturally. Chapter 17. Using Storytelling Techniques Everyone loves a good story. And why not? They're engaging, entertaining, and most importantly, they're relatable. As the listener, you're drawn into the world of the story, connecting with the characters and their experiences. But did you know that storytelling can also be a powerful communication skill? That's right. Mastering storytelling techniques can transform your social interactions, making them more engaging and memorable. You see, when you tell a story, you're not just sharing information, you're painting a picture with words, creating an emotional connection with your listener. This connection makes your message more persuasive and more likely to be remembered. So how can you incorporate storytelling into your communication? Start by identifying the key message you want to convey. Then, think of a story that illustrates this message. It could be a personal anecdote, a historical event, or even a fictional tale. The important thing is that it's relevant and relatable. Next, structure your story. Good stories have a beginning, middle, and end. They introduce a problem or challenge, show how it was tackled, and reveal the outcome. This structure keeps your listener engaged and helps them follow along. Lastly, use vivid, descriptive language to make your story come alive. The more details you provide, the easier it's for your listener to visualize your story and connect with it emotionally. Chapter 18. Handling Criticism and Feedback. Just as storytelling can make your communication more engaging, adeptly handling criticism and feedback can make it more effective. You see, it's not just about expressing your thoughts, it's also about adapting to the thoughts of others. It's a two-way street. When criticism comes your way, don't let it sting. Instead, treat it as an opportunity. It's a chance to learn, improve, and evolve. Remember, criticism isn't a personal attack it's a commentary on your work or behavior. So take it in stride, listen carefully, understand what's being said and why. That's the first step in handling criticism. Next, don't be defensive. It's easy to feel attacked and to react negatively, but that won't help you grow. Instead, be open. Show that you're willing to weigh alternative viewpoints. This not only helps you improve, but it also builds respect and trust in your relationships. But what about feedback? That's just as important. Whether it's positive or negative, feedback opens a window into how others perceive you. It helps you gauge your effectiveness and adjust accordingly. So welcome it, encourage it, and when it comes, handle it with grace and gratitude. In short, handling criticism and feedback isn't about smoothing over your flaws, it's about recognizing them, and taking steps to improve. It's an essential part of mastering communication skills. So don't shy away from it, embrace it. Your social life will thank you. Chapter 19, Developing Persuasive Skills. You might be surprised to learn that persuasion is a skill you use every day. Whether you're convincing your friend to try a new restaurant, persuading your boss to give you a raise, or simply getting your kids to clean their room, Persuasion is a key part of our daily interactions. But how can you enhance your persuasive skills? First, it's all about understanding your audience. You've got to know what makes them tick, what they value, and what they desire. Once you've got that down, you can tailor your message to align with those values and desires. For instance, if you know your boss values efficiency, 
you might highlight how your ideas could save the company time and resources. Second, make your message clear and concise. You can't persuade anyone if they can't understand what you're saying. Avoid jargon and complex language. Instead, use simple, direct language that gets your point across easily. Third, use compelling evidence to back up your claims. People are more likely to be persuaded if they see solid proof supporting your argument. So gather facts, statistics, testimonials, or examples that reinforce your points. Lastly, appeal to emotions. People aren't just logical, they're emotional beings too. If you can evoke feelings, whether it's excitement, fear, or empathy, you're more likely to sway your audience. After mastering the art of persuasion, another key aspect of communication comes into play projecting confidence and authority. This isn't about boasting or wearing a facade, but genuinely presenting yourself as someone who's sure of their ideas and capable of leading others. Projecting confidence begins with self-belief. Believe in your abilities, your ideas, and your worth. This belief will naturally seep into your words, tone, and body language. Make eye contact when you speak, stand tall, and don't shy away from speaking your mind. People are more likely to listen to you if they see you believe in what you're saying. Authority, on the other hand, isn't just about being in a position of power. It's about earning respect and trust through your actions and words. Be consistent in your actions, reliable in your commitments, and fair in your judgments. When people see that you're reliable and fair, they'll naturally respect you and heed your words. Chapter 20. Managing Group Conversations Manipulating the dynamics of group conversations is a crucial element of effective communication. It's a skill that can open doors to new opportunities, friendships, and partnerships. Imagine being the fulcrum in a group discussion, guiding the flow of ideas, and ensuring everyone's voice is heard. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? To manage group conversations effectively, you need to be a keen observer and listener. Spot the quieter individuals and invite them to contribute. What do you think, Olivia, is a simple yet powerful phrase to engage someone who may feel sidelined? Remember, it's not just about hearing people out, but making them feel valued. Next, be the peacekeeper. Disagreements are common in group discussions. Rather than allowing them to escalate, step in diplomatically. You could say, I understand where you're coming from, Tom, but let's also consider Sarah's perspective. This shows respect for differing opinions and encourages open dialogue. Mastering the art of managing group conversations also involves knowing when to speak up and when to step back. You're not there to dominate the conversation but to facilitate it. It's okay to interject if the discussion is veering off topic, but remember to always do so respectfully. Finally, always conclude conversations by summarizing key points and acknowledging contributions. It's a neat way to wrap up discussions and leaves everyone with a sense of accomplishment. Mastering group conversation management isn't an overnight feat, but with patience and practice, you'll find it an essential asset in your communication toolbox. Chapter 21. Overcoming Communication Anxiety. While managing group conversations is indeed a valuable skill, it's equally important to tackle any communication anxiety that might be holding you back. You've likely felt it before that heart-pounding fear when it's your turn to speak, that nagging worry about what others will think. It's a common plight, but you're not alone, and you do have the power to overcome this. Start by acknowledging your anxiety. Denying or suppressing it only gives it more power. Recognize it, accept it, but don't allow it to control you. Remember, it's okay to feel nervous. Everyone does at times. What's vital isn't letting it stop you from expressing yourself. Next, practice mindfulness. Be present in the moment, focusing on the conversation at hand, rather than dwelling on past missteps or potential future stumbles. This helps to alleviate the pressure you're putting on yourself and can lead to more authentic, relaxed interactions. Also, prepare and rehearse. If you're worried about a presentation or a difficult conversation, take time to prepare what you want to say. 
Walk through it a couple of times. Confidence often comes from preparation. Lastly, don't fear mistakes. They're inevitable and part of the learning process. Instead of viewing them as failures, see them as opportunities for growth. A mastering communication skills isn't only about speaking clearly and effectively. It's also about overcoming the barriers that inhibit those skills, like anxiety. When you face and conquer your communication anxiety, you're one step closer to transforming your social life. Chapter 22. Cultivating Emotional Intelligence. Delving into the domain of emotional intelligence can elevate your communication skills to new heights. Emotional intelligence isn't just a fancy buzzword. It's an essential part of effective communication. It's about understanding your emotions, managing them, and being able to empathize with others. You may think, I've got great communication skills, I don't need this, but having a high emotional intelligence can make you an even better communicator. It allows you to connect with others on a deeper level, which can drastically improve your social interactions. Let's break it down. Emotional intelligence is made up of four key elements self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Self-awareness involves recognizing your own emotions and how they affect your thoughts and behavior. Self-management is about controlling impulsive feelings and behaviors, managing your emotions in healthy ways, and taking initiative. Social awareness is the ability to understand and pick up on emotional cues from the people around you. This skill helps you to empathize with others, even when communication is minimal. Relationship management involves the ability to develop and maintain good relationships, communicate clearly, and influence others positively. But here's the thing. You can't just snap your fingers and become emotionally intelligent. It takes practice and patience. Start small, maybe by trying to identify your emotions more accurately. Then, work on managing those emotions in a healthy way. As you hone these skills, you'll find that your communication skills will transform and your social life will flourish. In the end, cultivating emotional intelligence isn't just about becoming a better communicator. It's about becoming a better you. Chapter 23. Measuring Communication Success Evaluating your communication success is as critical as honing the skills themselves. It's not enough to merely have a conversation, you must also gauge its effectiveness. This process, though it may seem intimidating, is simpler than you'd think. Start by examining your interactions. Do people engage with you? Do they understand your points? If they're nodding along, responding appropriately, and asking relevant questions, you're on the right track. But if they seem lost, confused, or disengaged, that's a sign you need to work on being clearer and more compelling. Next, consider feedback. Accept it graciously, whether it's positive or negative. Use it as a tool to refine your skills, making necessary adjustments to improve. Remember, feedback isn't a personal attack, it's a chance to grow. Another essential measure is your comfort level. Are you at ease during your interactions? You should feel confident, not anxious. If you're uncomfortable, it's a signal you need more practice. Luckily, every conversation is an opportunity to do just that. Lastly, assess your relationship progress. Good communication deepens connections. If you're building stronger relationships, you're effectively communicating. Measuring communication success isn't about perfection. It's about progress, growth, and constant improvement. Embrace the journey, keep refining your skills, and watch as your social life transforms. You've got this. So, you've got the tools to master communication and elevate your social life. Remember, understanding your audience and crafting compelling messages are key. Trust and authenticity will win hearts. Don't forget, your body language speaks volumes too. Keep owning these skills, manage group dialogues effectively, and let your emotional intelligence shine. Together we can conquer communication anxiety and measure success. So go on, seize the conversation. 
With practice, you'll be a communication wizard in no time. Thanks for listening to or reading this from Audiobooks Office.